Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today, let's chat all about Andrea Mowry's new Ron Beck sweater for 2023. Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey, and on this channel, I mainly like to chat about my love for all things fiber. I like to do some knitting, spinning, crochet, sewing, and who knows what else we'll get up to around here. I also like to chat about living on a small farm here in Arkansas, where my husband and myself and our children are beekeepers. We love to raise chickens, gardens, animals, and we really love spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like your cup of tea, then make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. Today's video, however, is all about Andrea Mowry's new pattern, the tessellated vest and pullover. So every year for Ron Beck, AKA the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, Andrea Mowry creates a new pattern and it's usually in conjunction with spin cycle yarns. And then she will use another yarn as well. Magpie Fibers is who it has usually been with. This year is a little bit different. There are quite a few different yarn companies involved in the collaboration. First of all, we have that staple of spin cycle yarns. <laughs> so one of the yarns in this pattern will be spin cycle. Spin cycle, however, also mills their yarn and sends it out to different dyers who then dye it with specific colors in a collaboration. With Magpie Fibers, it has been called Dyed in the Skein. This year, the yarn company Moondrake is also one of the yarn dyers, as well as Farmer Daughters Fibers. So there's quite a selection here. Another new thing with this year's pattern is the fact that there is both a pullover version and a vest version. So I am going to be testing the vest version myself. So with either the vest or the pullover, there are three different yarns used in the pattern. First one is Spin Cycle. The second one is a fingering heavy lace weight fluffy yarn like a Surrey or Cashmere. And then the third one is a sport weight wool yarn. I am using the recommended yarn. And for my main color, I am going to be using this new yarn called Moonspun. So this was in collaboration with Moondrake. This is yet again the wool that is milled by Spin Cycle. So this is the same wool as dyed in the wool, except that when they make it, it has not been dyed. It is a 100% superwash American wool, sport weight two ply. And the Moonspun is then sent to Moondrake where they dye it in house. And this is a color toffee. I just absolutely love this color. It is very me. I think it's stunning. The second yarn that I will be using is the Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool. And I am using the color Ghost Ranch. I got a particularly good batch of Ghost Ranch from Black Mountain Yarn Shop. And this is a bit more moody, muted colors than a lot of the skeins I have seen. And I absolutely love it. It has a lot of greens, sea greens, blues, all very moody, dusty, some maroon and pink in it. And I just, oh, I love it so much. So these are both sport weight yarns milled by Spin Cycle. And they knit up really, really beautifully together. For my third yarn, I am going to use this base from Moondrake as well, and it is called Fua Fua, which is a Japanese word, 
and I believe it means something that has a quality of being light and airy, which is very accurate. This is a fingering weight cashmere yarn and it has a silk core. It is very much like the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Odang Surrey Base. I, I really love it. It's very soft. It's not itchy at all. It's just, it's so <laughs> incredibly soft. It's crazy. So I'll be working with these three yarns in my sweater and it creates a sort of plaid pattern. So in the pictures on the pattern that Andrea sent us, it definitely, there's definitely some differences between the vest and the pullover. First of all, the pullover has a substantially larger bottom ribbing hem. The vest is about half as much ribbing for the hem as the pullover. I like a lot of ribbing. I love some dramatic ribbing. I think it looks really good. It's my preferred look. So I'm going to alter that a little bit and just knit my ribbing probably about twice as long as what is called for. Second of all, the pullover I noticed has a lot more positive ease than the vest. And since I am knitting the vest, I am going to knit it at the recommended ease, which is not very much. I, in fact, may even do zero positive ease. Whereas if I was knitting the pullover, I would love it to be loose and flowy and have a boxy fit with a lot of positive ease and a little bit of crop. <laughs> I think that would be really cute. And another thing I know I'm gonna have to do is adjust the length because with all of Andrea Mowry patterns and most other patterns, I always have to lengthen the body of a sweater or top. I'm 5'8", and I know Andrea Mowry has said before, I think she's either 5'4", 5'2", something like that. But I am, you know, substantially taller. I'm at least four inches taller than she is. And I always have to lengthen it. Not only do I have to lengthen the body, a lot of times I have to lengthen the yoke. So I'm going into it knowing that I will probably need to make the body of my vest longer and whenever I split and start working this section, then I'll probably have to make that longer as well. I will show y'all my swatch of what my fabric looks like. So as you can see, I've tried to make a fairly big swatch, but the mosaic knitting is definitely going to, I think, pull it in a little bit, but we will see. I'm excited. Okay, so I wanted to check back in. I did cast on my vest. I finished the ribbing and I ended up knitting my bottom ribbing two and a half inches versus the pattern which called for either one or one and a half inches of ribbing for the bottom hem. But I like that length a lot. Uh, another thing is that with the mosaic knitting, I was a little worried that it would really tighten up and pull it in. Unless I'm working color work socks, working color work socks on nine inch circulars, I always tend to tighten up a lot, but otherwise in a sweater, I almost subconsciously overcompensate. And as I'm knitting, I will pull the stitches apart constantly to keep it loose and to keep it from pulling in and cinching in and getting tight. Even though every inch of this body is <laughs> mosaic color work, it is not tight at all. In fact, I am very loose still on my on my knitting, so I'm happy with that. I am carrying my yarn up and it is staying pretty neat so far because I am wrapping it the same way every time. So when I finish a color and I'm going to start a new color, I grab my new color and bring it from underneath and over and then start knitting. And if you do that every single time, so under and then over and start knitting, then it will always keep that very neat wrapped look. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, this is the inside of my sweater so far and it looks really neat with those wrapped stitches. It's staying really neat. And I think the back of my color work looks pretty good too. All right, I'm gonna get busy, continue on with this pattern, and I will check back in when I have finished it up. See y'all soon. All right, y'all, it is finished. 
finished. Okay, I absolutely love how this has turned out. It has turned out really drapey actually. It's got a lot of drape while still having um, some good structure. I love the pattern on it. It feels so soft. So the Moonspun feels a lot softer even after I wash it. And there's basically just nothing itchy about this entire piece, this entire vest right now. So let me tell you a little bit about what I did. I think the last time I talked with you guys, I told you that I did plan on making a few length modifications. So I made the longer hem and from the hem to where I split for the front and the back, I ended up making that 12 inches. That's before I went back and picked up stitches for my ribbing. So then whenever I did my armhole shaping and this section of the top before I bound off for the neck, I actually added an inch into that section as well. Then I did the normal amount of length for the straps, I guess you could say the yoke. Yeah, I think you could say yoke. And you do a three needle bind off um, inside out so that the outside has this really cool effect. A couple things that you will want to consider if you're using color shifting yarn like spin cycle. Shut the door, I'm almost done. You're going to be knit this you're going to be picking up yarn here and I noticed that in Andrea Mowry's sample you can see where that is a different color. I really wanted to make mine as close as possible so I purposefully color managed so that where I had knit this section I could make a very similar color for this section. And as you can see they're almost a perfect match so I really like that. This is my color shift on the front. And this is my color shift on the back. Right, let me try this on. So I really, really love it. I do want to mention that I did end up picking up fewer stitches for my underarms and I'm glad that I did because I talked to another tester and her underarm kind of pulls away from her a little bit and I'm glad that I made sure that that was sort of cinched in right there. I don't really like a really wide open underarm. So this is my natural waist right here and my ribbing is hitting right below that. It's coming right to my belly button, which is right here. And it it is a pretty good fit. I blocked, I did not aggressively block this at all. I could for sure. And even with very unaggressive blocking, the body grew from 12 inches to 14 inches. So I gained two inches and most of the other testers that I talked to, they gained two inches as well. I do want to mention the pattern definitely has given me a Dolly Parton moment. And I feel like that's because it stretches across my chest and it, the pattern stretching just makes, makes my chest look out of control. Anyway. It is what it is. I think this is gonna be super cute with dresses. I think it's gonna be really fun with high-waisted pants. I plan on wearing it with my Winslow culottes that I hacked to be tied pants. And I'll put a picture up there, up here of that. But overall, I really, really like this. I think any heavy fingering sport weight yarn would work really well for the base. I absolutely love the Moonspun, but I love the dyed in the wool and I think that if you're a spinner, hand spun would be absolutely beautiful in this project. I think that the pullover is so beautiful. I kind of, I really wanted a pullover 
but I think I'll be more comfortable in the vest at Rhinebeck because I know that it'll be cooler, especially if it's a little bit warmer weather in October. I will say I really like the fact that I added extra length to the ribbing and I think that that looks really good and that's if I ever make this again I will absolutely do a double length of the ribbing like I did in this version. There's only one time that I felt a little bit confused and that was whenever it came to binding off the stitches at the underarm. And that was because at one point I wasn't entirely sure if one stitch was included in that bind off or not. But thankfully as I worked around, I sort of figured out what where that stitch needed to be and it all worked out in the end. But you might have to stop and think for a second at that point in the pattern. Otherwise, I feel like everything is very clear, very easy to understand, very simple. It has written instructions row by row. It has charted instructions for your decreases. And so you can have both to sort of make sure that you understand what you're doing or if you prefer one or the other, you have both available to pick, to pick one from. I think the pullover is gorgeous and I love how it has a lot of positive ease in it. I think I will definitely make the pullover version maybe even in some hand spun that I have. But this has been a very enjoyable project. And if you make it and you're going to Rhinebeck, then I will see you at the hill. Happy knitting, y'all.